Molvad VPN just shocked the entire community, myself included, by releasing a browser called Molvad Browser. And in this field of privacy browsers, I was like, do we really need more? But this actually is a bit different. So let's take a look at what this is, who it's for, and some of the really exciting things about it, and some of the not so exciting things. On first launch, it'll look like a mix of a hardened Firefox and Tor, because that's actually kind of what it is, but it's more complicated than that. And we'll touch on the technical details later. This is though, truly a collaboration project between the official Tor project and Mulvet, the VPN company. You'll see a security level similar to Tor, an identity reset option similar to Tor, a Mulvet extension, which is only useful if you're using Mulvet VPN, more on that soon, and uBlock Origin, which many of you now know as a staple extension for hardening Firefox. Fun tip too, NoScript is there uh, in the background kind of doing its thing. On the note of hardening Firefox, if you dig into the About Config menu, another favorite of the Firefox hardening crowd, which we'll talk a lot about today, you'll find there are many already adjusted toggles to match some of the adjustments made by projects like Arkenfox, as well as the Tor browser. And if you go into your settings, this is very similar to the Tor browser as well, with the exception of this little search engine, which is actually not being talked about much, but it's Mulvad's own search engine that gives you Google results, but it's behind the paywall of a Mulvad subscription. Loading some websites, and it's a very usable experience. I tried many websites, some of them break on a hardened Firefox, and it overall seems fine here. This does not run through Tor. So speeds are very good. Even with the designed usage of using Mulvad VPN, it overall seems like a very fair compromise between website compatibility and privacy and security. The main downside to Mulvad from a general usability perspective in my eyes is it's private mode by default, meaning out of the box, this probably won't be your go-to browser you use to log into things and engage with most of your accounts. By all means, you definitely can. No one's stopping you. It's just you're going to be logging into each account every time you open your browser. And just to speak to this issue, actually, of maybe it's not the best thing for accounts, web authentication is disabled by default, meaning if you use a YubiKey or any other hardware key for your two-factor authentication, it's not even supported on Molvad unless you adjust a toggle in the About Config menu, which you probably shouldn't be doing for fingerprint purposes. So yeah. Also, shout out to people on our forum who discovered this. Now, as of right now, this is desktop only, available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, which I am actually firmly in support of, given the countless limitations on mobile devices where they could try to make a similar product, but it'd be a very particularly challenging feat, especially on iOS. So I definitely understand why they started here, but let's start diving into the technical bits so we can actually understand what's going on under the hood. So for those who don't know, Firefox hardening is one of the go-to recommendations for people looking to make their browser more private and secure. We have a whole guide going through that process. And in 2023, this process mostly entails using a project called Arkenfox, which automatically takes care of this hardening process for you very well and efficiently. And it's also very effective, but it comes at the cost of the time and energy required to do it, some day-to-day -day usability sacrifices, and questionably impacts your browser's fingerprint, in theory making it more unique, which in theory makes you ironically more trackable in certain contexts. That's hardened Firefox. Tor browser, on the other hand, has two main selling points. The first is every installation of the Tor browser is designed to make users look exactly the same and have the same fingerprint, even going as far to hide your screen dimensions, hence those white boxes. Tor browser also wraps through the Tor network, which is kind of part two, which blends you in with everyone else on a network level through a mostly trustless decentralized system. Where Mulvad browser fits is it takes a lot of what makes Tor browser unique ironically, because it's not unique, in the sense of blending users together, along with some of the benefits of a hardened Firefox and packaged it into the same browser, so users of Mulvad browser have a similar fingerprint while having overall a usable experience. Future Henry here, just wanted to mention that privacytests.org, which is one of my favorite resources for comparing browsers, already has added Mulvad to the list. So if you want to directly compare Mulvad to some other options for some basic tests, that's already live. A core place where Mulvad differs here from Tor is in the network. You can use Mulvad without a VPN at all and just reap the benefits of its tracking, security, privacy, and fingerprint protection. But the ideal situation here and what Mulvad wants you to do is to use Mulvad VPN with it because now you have the overall protection of the Tor browser while going through the same VPN servers as other Mulvad users. 
Where Molvad VPN still greatly falls behind Tor is in the fact that Tor is decentralized versus Molvad is centralized and you have to put faith in Molvad the company. And they acknowledge this too. This is not a secret. They'd be silly not to acknowledge that. But for the record, I think Molvad is one of maybe two VPN companies in this realm that actually have the technology and reputation to pull off something like this and successfully reassure people that it will be safe despite being a centralized VPN service. I would argue for a lot of people, this is kind of this perfect middle ground with the biggest drawback in my opinion being it's not a great browser for those of you who want an efficient browser where you're logged into all of your main accounts, where you just open things and you know log into all your personal accounts, unless you wanna modify the browser a bit to save cookies and allow web authentication, which also kind of breaks the point of the browser since you're not supposed to touch it and Mulvad even suggests in their blog article not to touch the settings. Personal analysis time, I personally think Think this is great, which I'm surprised to say given I generally really dislike the saturation in particularly the messenger and browser space, which I feel like already has so many wonderful projects and it's hard to justify one more service. Especially when we keep seeing companies like DuckDuckGo make browsers that realistically add very little to the privacy world outside of just features that other people supply that are designed to lock you into a new ecosystem, in this case, DuckDuckGo's ecosystem, which in fairness to them, Mulvad is also kind of doing this, but it's not a requirement to be a Mulvad subscriber to use the Mulvad browser. And it also makes sense and fits into their ecosystem perfectly. And most importantly, what separates Mulvad and DuckDuckGo is Mulvad's actually adding a real use case to the privacy world here that hasn't been done by anyone else. Whereas DuckDuckGo just kind of does what Firefox Focus does, but via DuckDuckGo branding. Ultimately, the use case, in my opinion, for most people is that this is almost a perfect drop-in for people with a hardened Firefox, to the point where I don't think it's far-fetched to recommend most people just literally uninstall their hardened Firefox, install Mulvad browser, and it being almost a perfect drop-in out of the box, regardless if you use Mulvad VPN or not, given you're pretty much getting a similar hardened Firefox that's actually being maintained by a trustworthy company without needing to do any work on your end. And for many threat models, with Mulvad VPN, this could maybe even take the place of Tor browser, assuming you don't need the maximum benefits of the Tor browser, which we covered are still overall safer than this. For those of you who use a hardened Firefox, particularly Arc and Fox, the maintainer of Arc and Fox seems to be in the process of shutting down the project in the near future because the Mulvad browser kind of cannibalizes Arc and Fox and Firefox hardening. And just to really highlight this, because I know some of you are going to cling to your hardened Firefox for the next decade and think you're doing the best thing here. This is the main person. This person here is the maintainer of Arc and Fox. And He's pushing the envelope on Firefox hardening out there, and yet he's still commenting on the effectiveness of Mulvad's browser and how good it overall is. They even have a post here comparing Arc and Fox to Mulvad's browser, which I'll leave down below, so you can read it for yourself from the primary source, which also details their vision of probably retiring Arc and Fox in the near future, because Mulvad browser kind of cannibalizes Arc and Fox in a lot of ways. First, I actually think this can be used by really anyone of really any threat model. I think the core use case for this browser is it's a disposable browser. And what I mean by that is it's for general things, general searches, general browsing, things that don't inherently have to be tied to you and that you can more or less anonymize with the world. As an example, logging into your personal bank account is something that's directly tied to you. So maybe use a different browser for that because it doesn't really matter if you're using a browser with the aim of blending you to look like everyone else when you're logging into an account directly tied to you. But looking up the weather for your town or searching how to walk your dog or how to tie a tie or looking up the news or even watching our videos on TechLore on YouTube, Odyssey or PeerTube, those are things that this browser will accept sell in without the speed drawbacks of Tor. Now, personally for me, I'm currently using Brave for all my accounts and go-to stuff that I need on a day-to-day -day basis, but I might start using Mulvad browser as a secondary browser to push some of my more general searches through to reap some of those anonymity benefits because frankly, Tor is pretty slow for me for just regular day-to-day -day usage for lower threat model things. I have Tor installed, but only for very particular situations where I feel there's something that needs a higher degree of safety. But Mulvad generally is a much better option and this is a perfect drop in for a hardened Firefox configuration for my specific threat model. Finally, some questions I have for Molvad. I don't expect them to respond to this, but just some general questions I still have about this service that maybe um, people can share with me their feedback if they have any. Um, I really wanna ask why web authentication is disabled because that's a pretty big usability sacrifice for people. I also wanted to ask if I uninstall Molvad's extension because I'm not a Molvad customer and have no intention of using Molvad, is there a net loss to the anonymity with this browser? 
um, is the safety downgraded or should I just leave the Molvet extension there and not touch it? I know that's definitely the safest thing to do, but I'd love to hear what would happen if I just uninstalled the Molvet extension from a privacy and security perspective. And lastly, is there a future to expand this ecosystem? Like, will there be a way to sync bookmarks natively between devices? Or how about having mobile clients? That's the browser. It's public to download, so go try it yourself. I think it's overall an incredible offering and I'm excited to see it and frankly didn't see it coming from a mile away. So. Good stuff. I wanted to mention that uh, a lot of people were chatting about this browser for the last several days on our forum, and they actually pointed me to a lot of good information. So if you like to have privacy communities, we have our forum down in the description that you can join. And also we can't be doing this without people on Patreon. So thank you all very much to all our Patreon supporters. Go check that out down in the description and uh, we'll see you next time on Techlore.